back to my roots. Something about the way she... <laughs> Even if you've been living under a rock or even a boulder for that matter in the last few years, you've likely already heard about all the debate in the truck world. Specifically here, we're talking about diesel trucks and the various degrees of emissions regulations that have been put forth by the one and only EPA. And regardless of whether or not you agree or disagree with everything that's going on right now, there's still one thing for sure. There is a group of folks who still love to roll coal. But what exactly is rolling coal? How does it actually work from an engine side of things? And why should you or maybe shouldn't you do it? I'm Dustin with Custom Offsets. You guys can follow me on the gram at dusty.co. And today's video is all about rolling coal and why you should and do it. Let's get into it. If this is your first time here, then welcome. Thank you guys and gals for stopping by and for checking out the channel. We started this channel way back in 2015, which doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but it was like six years ago already, to help bring you guys all the information and industry insights that we can and have been blessed over the years to see it grow and turn into what it is today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and maybe, you know, share this video with a friend or two or three or five or 10, you know, that might enjoy it. But enough about that, let's talk about diesel smoke. Well, I'm pretty sure that most of us know what rolling coal is. Let's just spend a moment talking about exactly what happens when you roll coal and why it maybe isn't the best thing for your truck. Now, if you go out on the old Google and do a little quick Google search on rolling coal, you're gonna find a ton of articles from 2016 to present time from some of the most reputable news sources. We're talking things like the New York Times, Car Throttle, and a bunch of others. These articles tend to paint the diesel truck market in a pretty aggressive way. They talk about illegal modifications to emission systems and tell stories of trucks spewing black smoke on passing cars, guys on bicycles, and of course, the one and only cliche Prius driver. Here's how it works. When you break it down, diesel engines are actually very simple by nature. They're like your grandfather, right? He always does the same things every day, always drives the same roads, always orders the same foods from his favorite restaurants when he goes for Sunday chicken. They're just consistent all the time. Much in the same way, diesel engines are also simple and they're consistent. See, unlike their gasoline engine counterparts that require a spark plug to fire, diesel engines are compression, compression. Diesel engines are compression fired, meaning that the friction of the piston pushing upwards in the cylinder ignites the diesel fuel and air mixture, causing the explosion and the fuel burn that drives the piston downward. This energy then turns the crank, which spins the flywheel, which feeds through the transmission and ultimately turns your wheels and drives you down the road. Unless, of course, your name is Jared and you have a blown transmission in your dually. Jared, I'm sorry. The jokes just write themselves. I can't help it. They just... It would be a sin for me not to include that. Because of the simple nature of diesel engines, tuning diesel engines is relatively simple in comparison to their gas counterparts. Powder counterparts? Because of the simple nature of diesel engines, tuning diesel engines is relatively simple in comparison to their gasoline engine counterparts. If you're a Cummins guy, then you already know where I'm going with this one. See, before we had this cool technology called fuel injection and common rail injection and all of that stuff, most diesel engines had a mechanical fuel pump. This means that if you wanted more power, you would just put more diesel fuel in by, you know, going under the hood and turning the screw up on the injection pump and then bam, more fuel, more power. The 12 valve guys are notorious for this as well as the old farm tractor pullers in the day. We had a 4640 on the farm. When you wanted more power in the fall because the air was denser, you just went under the hood, turned the screw half a turn, bam, you blew black smoke everywhere. It made the neighbors pissed. Newer, more modern diesel engines ditch that mechanical fuel pump for an electronic fuel injection system, but at the end of the day, the principle is still the same. More fuel, more air, more power. Here's where it gets smoky. While the origins of rolling coal aren't officially documented anywhere, the word on the street tells us that fundamentally it started in the sled pulling world, where guys would hop up their diesel trucks and tractors to yank a sled pull down the track. Now listen, 
If you've never been to a tractor pull, then let me tell you a little story. Come along on this journey for just a moment with me. Tractor pulls are, without a doubt, one of my favorite parts of the summer in the Midwest. There's nothing quite like the sound of turbo screaming and diesel singing and mud slinging and crowds cheering as guys wind up their diesel trucks and send a Mach 10 down the track in hopes to go the distance. To be honest, there's only two things that I love more than truck pulls and those are sprint car races and bush lattes and usually those two go together. If you haven't already experienced those yet, you have to, like ASAP. Like who, who's got a truck pull down south that I can fly to and hang out to for the weekend to get out of the cold Wisconsin Midwest weather this winter? If you do, let me know down below. I'll be there. Anyways, I'm sorry we got sidetracked. Where were we? Oh yeah, right, okay, rolling coal. While it's awesome that we can just increase fuel in the cylinders and make more power, it does come with a price. At some point, it does become impossible to burn all of the diesel fuel in your engine cylinders if you turn it up too far. This is because you need oxygen to burn that fuel, and unless you're slapping a massive boosty boy on there, then you'll eventually reach a point where you won't be able to burn it all. It just doesn't happen. This excess unburnt fuel is then pushed out of the cylinders with the rest of the exhaust gases, and guess what? It comes out of your truck as none other than black smoke or coal. That's right. It's that simple, kids. If you didn't know, rolling coal is literally just pushing unburnt fuel out of your engine through the exhaust and into the air. Not only is this a bit concerning from an EPA standpoint, but also it really isn't the best for your engine. Now, don't get me wrong, with a good custom tune, you're gonna see a little bit of black smoke on your truck, right? This is even more prevalent if your truck has a fixed geometry turbo is you're going to reach peak boost much later in the RPM range than those guys like me who are running a variable geometry turbo. With that being said though, bellowing a fat stack of black smoke out of your exhaust is probably just not the best idea, especially with the price of diesel fuel these days. I mean, come on, you're killing me right now, it's crazy. So let's say you wanna wake your truck up a little bit and not roll coal every time you take off. What options do you actually have? The good news here is that there are diesel performance companies out there that are manufacturing tuners that are legal in all 50 states. One such company that's doing a fantastic job and also has a really cool story about diesel performance is the one and only Banks Power. If you've been here for a while now, you know that a few months ago, I actually got to fly out to California and hang out with Jay and the rest of the guys at Banks Power. And let me tell you, the experience was absolutely incredible. The machine shop is awesome. The dyno cell was cool. I got to stand under a truck on the lift that Gail did his videos about the diff cover. It was super cool. Gail, Jay, and the rest of the guys out there are top notch and they really do more than just make tunes for trucks. They test them over and over and over again until they're confident that the product you are getting is going to be the best in the market. Plus, every Banks Power product is carb certified, meaning that it has this little EO number sticker, and that even if you live in an emissions restricted area like California, for example, you can still get a few extra horsepower out of your truck. Now, call it right or wrong, you have to admit that rolling coal is definitely a conversation piece, and while we can't really say it for sure, it does seem that the regulations are only going to continue to get more strict. But that's enough out of me. What do you guys think about rolling coal? Are you for it or are you more of a clean tune guy? Let us know down in the comment section below, and as always, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that, I'm Dust with Custom Offsets. We'll see you guys on the next one.